Okay, sent in for repair. Another Sonos Play Bar. Wait a minute. Two Sonos Play Bars from two different customers. But check this out. They both have the exact same problem. The optical inputs on both of these are damaged. So I need to go ahead and tear these things apart and get new optical input jacks in these. So in my box of miscellaneous jacks, I just happen to keep the Sonos Play Bar optical jacks in stock because I have replaced a couple of them in the past. I didn't do videos on them, but I did do a video on one of them and that got the ball rolling. So as you can see, I have some regular USB A's and a bunch of these Sonos Play Bar optical jacks in stock ready for replacement. Now this is about a two hour job to go ahead and tear these things apart and replace the jacks. So I'm only gonna do it on one because I already showed it one other time. So hopefully this one will be a little bit better video than the first one was. So it's really hard to show on these things just because of their size and the small workbench that I have. But to get these things apart, you need to go ahead and pop these little trim pieces off. Now they're just held on with adhesive, nothing else. So once you've got that off, check it out. There's screws. There are four screws up in here that you can go ahead and take out to go ahead and remove these ends. Both ends are exactly the same. Just try to remember the orientation of these pieces. These are aluminum. They're not plastic. So don't pry too hard and just try to pull it up in one direction. Kind of gently pry around like you saw me do. And then go ahead and take the screws out of both ends. Now that the screws are out, you can go ahead and very, very carefully open this up. And there's going to be a ribbon cable in here that you'll need to unplug. That disconnects the keypad right here from the rest of the unit. And we'll go ahead and do that on the other end. There's no ribbon cable on the other end. It just needs to be disassembled. So exactly the same thing on this end. Just gently pry it up and out of the way. Like I said, this end, no connections whatsoever, so it can just be taken up and out of there. Now, I'm sorry if the focus is not good, but it's such a weird angle, I can't get a really good focus on it. But next, just go ahead and pull this up. It's gonna snap out of the base all the way around. The front works exactly the same way. Once you get it up far enough, you can actually take this little speaker grill completely off. So keep in mind, there's gonna be a ground screw right there, and I'm gonna turn the unit around. And then right here, very hard to see, there's gonna be another cable that needs to be disconnected. Just pull up on it very gently, and it will unplug. Okay, so I've already removed the lug from the screw. And I went ahead and screwed the screw back into this so I remember where it goes because trust me, there's a lot of screws that have to come out of this unit to get it disassembled. So starting over here on the left side, you'll see a black screw. You need to remove that. You need to remove every single silver screw, the two black screws in the middle, the rest of the silver screws, and this black screw on the end. We're going to have to go ahead and remove all of these screws as well that hold this aluminum plate on the top and disconnecting this ground lug as well as these other silver screws there's one more way off to the edge that you really can't see right here you'll have to remove that as well okay down here on the bottom on the mounting tabs there's two screws all right so this is the part where you think you're going to break it but you actually won't go ahead and pry up on this until it pops open like this. Then the whole back plate can be lifted off. There's a secret connector hidden in the middle right here. It's under this foam. So you've got to go ahead and peel the foam back. So it just unplugs like that. It's keyed. You cannot put it in in the wrong direction. There's one more connector. Be very gentle. It just pulls straight out. Over here on the other side, there's a second foam connector. So it might be kind of hard to see, but there is another screw down in here that has to be removed. Another screw down here. You have to remove the heat sink 
from the amplifier right here two screws right there and then exactly the same on the other side screw down in here a screw down in here and a screw you can barely see it down in here so let's go and zip those out real quick now that the heat sink is disconnected i have the screw out of it it may take a little bit of force to pop it up and off of here there is a thermal pad here but the cover is going to pull up and just leave that where it is try not to disturb that thermal pad any more than necessary okay so next i'm just going to very gently try to pop this open you can see there's all the circuit boards and everything there's that thermal pad just go ahead and start unplugging connectors these are the speaker terminals right here very hard to see you might have missed a couple of them but i did have to unplug this connector from right there and then this connector unplugged from right there Now there are some Wi-Fi antennas here. Sometimes it's easier to just unplug them right here on the circuit board. Other times you can remove them right here and fish them through the holes. I usually try to unplug them back here on the circuit board. You can actually lift these up out of the standoffs and they're normally just held on with some hot glue. Sometimes you can just peel it up. Connector comes off just like that. So now we've got our other end of the ground wires. It's easier for me just to go ahead and pull that screw out right there. So I'm going to have to get down underneath this area right there to repair it anyhow. So I realize I'm dancing all over the place, but sometimes that's what it takes. Go ahead and remove this one connector right here that goes up to the front panel. And now these speaker wires can actually be unplugged. There's another one. And they will pull through the bottom of the circuit board there's really only one way they'll go in because they have to be a certain length to connect unfortunately you do end up damaging a lot of the foam tape but I've never had an issue with one of these normally way more than enough foam that it needs okay check it out now I can completely separate the speaker assembly from the circuit board down there we really don't have a good location to hold this so it's going to be kind of jiggly Grab a little knife and try to pry up on this little piece of plastic. Normally once you get one side started, this all has to come off. Because look what's hiding underneath. Oh, that one's got glue over it, but you'll see one, two, three screws that must come out to service this unit. Okay, now that that is done, it's just a matter of removing these screws. This cover just pops right up. Remove that connector. This one just pulls straight up and out. Now you do have a ribbon cable right here that does need to be removed. To remove that connector, just lift this tab straight up. And then they put a little droplet of glue right there to hold it down. Once that tab's released, it'll pull straight out. And if everything is right in the world, this will lift completely out. Then we can get to the bottom. We'll need to go ahead and pull these four screws out right there. We'll have to scrape this silicone, it's just RTV off. Then you can unsolder the optical input jack and replace it with a brand new one. Okay, I've got the four screws out and this whole thing should just lift off the board. The power cable is still attached. If you want to, you can go ahead and remove those two screws right there, and it will allow you to completely remove this plastic piece off of here. But I'm just gonna flip it back right there. All right, so that's about all the farther I need to go. Now we can go ahead and unsolder that jack and get the new one soldered in place.
So I'm going to go ahead and add some fresh solder here. So if I get all the connections heated up simultaneously, I don't even need a solder sucker to get it out. It just comes out. Now you may have to use some solder wick or something else to clean off the board right there because you do want the holes clear when you go ahead and try to resolder this back on the board. But now the uh, silicone's been heated up, it'll actually strip right off the board really easily. So there it is. All right, there we go. All the holes are cleaned out. Be very, very careful on the top of the board that you don't damage these little surface mount capacitors and the surface mount resistor right there. So it's just going to press onto the board like that. Make sure that you line up those three pins that none of them get bent over while you're inserting this. Now I'm going to start with the two anchor pins. We'll flow solder on those. And I'm going to press up from the bottom while I heat it just to make sure it's got a good contact with the board. Then we'll solder those three pins. But what video wouldn't be complete without a little bit of magical solution acetone? Just going to clean the flux off the board real quick. There we go, looks great. So before I go ahead and put it back together, I do have an optical cable right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in and make sure that it plugs in and latches good. And that it unplugs and the door closes. Just like that. So a little drop of hot glue is going to secure those pins to the board. They used RTV. I do believe hot glue is much stronger than RTV in a cool state at least. I don't expect this thing to get very warm to even remotely begin to melt the glue. So next it's time for reassembly. Just put all this stuff back together like you found it. it should be good to go.
All right, so I have two Sonos Play Bars up and running, ready to ship back to the customers. Let's go ahead and hook them up, one at a time. Make sure they play sound. I have an optical cable right here. There's the first one. There's the second one. Working absolutely perfectly. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Sonos Play Bars, replacing the optical input jack, the Toslink jack. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. And honestly, if you leave a comment on the Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, I may not get it for several weeks. Go ahead and send me an email. That is the best way to contact me. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, bye-bye.